Hey, great day, everyone. Welcome to Oil for the Journey. Uh, my name is Sunny. I'm your journey reader for today. We are in the book of Numbers, chapters 24 through 26. And so we're just so grateful um, to be following the Bridges for Peace and that the Truth Bible reading plan. Thankful for the time that they took to curate this plan, to create it, to create the videos, to teach you not just us, not just about having a deeper connection to Israel, right, and understanding more about the roots of our faith, but it's about having that deeper connection with God it, because of understanding history, understanding the Jewishness of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and how all of these things are supposed to lead us back to him. Um, that's their heart, you know, and that's our heart, even while we are just reading the word with you all every year. So we thank you so much for joining us. And so let's just pray. Lord, we just, uh, we thank you for this time in your word, daddy, as we intentionally draw near to you. Father, we thank you that you will draw near to us. Help us to hear what we need to hear. Help us to see. Help us to understand. God, in all of our getting, may we get understanding. God, may we never lose heart. May we never grow weary in our well-doing, God. Continue to strengthen your children, your people, Lord God. Even as we read through lineages, we, we know that you are about lineage and and, um, and, and and being faithful to your word, to your promises, Father God. And so we thank you for the promises that you have given to families, Lord, to sustain families, Lord, to keep us. And I pray that we want to be kept by you. So one of my former pastors used to say, so we thank you for this. Even now, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, Numbers 24. <clears throat> but now Balaam realized that the Lord was determined to bless Israel. So he did not resort to divination as before. Instead, he turned and looked out toward the wilderness, where he saw the people of Israel camp tribe by tribe. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and this is the message he delivered. This is the message of Balaam. Son of Beor, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly the message of one who hears the words of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob! How lovely are your homes, O Israel! They spread before me like a palm, like palm groves, like gardens by the riverside. They are like tall trees planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets. Their offspring have all they need. Their king will be greater than Agag. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. For them, he is as strong as a wild ox. He devours all the nations that oppose him, breaking their bones in pieces, shooting them with arrows like a lion. Israel crouches and lies down like a lioness who dares to arouse her. Blessed is everyone who blesses you, O Israel, and cursed is everyone who curses you. King Balak flew into a rage against Balaam. He angrily clapped his hands and shouted, I called you to curse my enemies instead. You have blessed them three times. Now get out of here. Go back home. I promise to reward you richly. But the Lord has kept you from your reward. Mm. Balaam told Balak, Don't you remember what I told your messengers? I said, Even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord. I told you that I could only, I could only, I can, I could say only what the Lord says. Now I am returning to my own people, but first let me tell you what the Israelites will do to your people in the future. This is the message Balaam delivered. 
This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, the message of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. I see him, but not here and now. I perceive him, but far in the distant future. A star will rise from Jacob. A scepter will emerge from Israel. It will crush the heads of Moab's people, cracking the skulls of the people of Sheath. Edom will take, be taken over, and Seir, its enemies, will be conquered. While Israel marches on in triumph, a ruler will rise in Jacob who will destroy the survivors of Ir. Then Balaam looked over toward the people of Amalek and delivered this message. Amalek was the greatest of nations, but its destiny is destruction. Then he looked over toward the Kenites and delivered this message. Your home is secure. Your nest is set in the rocks, but the Kenites will be destroyed when Assyria takes you captive. Balaam concluded his messages by saying, Alas, who can survive unless God has willed it? Ships will come from the coast of Cyprus. They will oppress Assyria and afflict Eber, but they too will be utterly destroyed. Then Balaam left and returned home, and Balak also went on his way. Numbers 25 while the Israelites were camped at Acacia Grove, some of the men defiled themselves by having sexual relations with local Moabite women. These women invited them to attend sacrifices to their gods. So the Israelites feasted with them and worshipped the gods of Moab. In this way, Israel joined in the worship of Baal of Peor, causing the Lord's anger to blaze against his people. The Lord issued the following command to Moses, seize all the ringleaders and execute them before the Lord in broad daylight. So his fierce anger will turn away from the people of Israel. So Moses ordered Israel's judges, each of you must put to death the men under your authority who have joined in worshiping Baal of Peor. Just then, one of the Israelite men brought a Midianite woman into his tent right before the eyes of Moses. And all the people, as everyone was weeping at the entrance of the tabernacle, when Phinehas, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he jumped up and left the assembly. He took a spear and rushed after the man into his tent. Phinehas thrust the spear all the way through the man's body and into the woman's stomach. So the plague against the Israelites was stopped, but not before 24,000 people had died. Mm. Then the Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites by being as zealous among them as I was. So I stopped destroying all Israel as I had intended to do in my zealous anger. Now tell him that I am making my special covenant of peace with him. In this covenant, I gave him and his descendants a permanent right to the priesthood. For in his zeal for me, his God, he purified the people of Israel, making them right with me. The Israelite man killed with the Midianite woman was named Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of the family of the tribe of Simeon. The woman's name was Cosby. She was the daughter of Zur, the leader of a Midianite clan. Then the Lord said to Moses, Attack the Midianites and destroy them because they assaulted you with deceit and tricked you into worshiping Baal of Peor. And, Ka and because of Cosby, the daughter of, the, of a Midianite leader who was killed at the time of the plague because of what happened at Peor. Numbers 26. After the plague had ended, the Lord said to Moses and to Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest from the whole community of Israel, record the names of all the warriors by their families. List all the men 20 years old or older who are able to go to war. So there on the plains of Moab, beside the Jordan River, across from Jericho, Moses and Eleazar the priests issued these instructions to the leaders of Israel. 
list all the men of Israel 20 years old and older, just as the Lord commanded Moses. This is the record of all the descendants of Israel who came out of Egypt. These were the clans descended from the sons of Reuben, Jacob's oldest son. The Hanukite clan, named after the ancestor Hanak. The Paluite clan, named after their ancestor Palu. The Hezronite clan, named after their ancestor Hezron. The Carmite clan, named after their ancestor Carmi. These were the clans of Reuben. Their registered troops numbered 43,730. Palu was the ancestor of Eliab, and Eliab was the father of Nemuel, Dathan, and Abiram. This Dathan and Abiram are the same community leaders who conspired with Korah against Moses and Aaron, rebelling against the Lord, but the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed them with Korah, and fire devoured 250 of their followers. This served as a warning to the entire nation of Israel. However, the sons of Korah did not die that day. The tribe of Simeon. These were the clans descended from the sons of Simeon. The Jemuelite clan, named after their ancestor Jemuel. The Jemenite clan, named after their ancestor Jemin. Jackinite clan, named after their ancestor Jackin. Zoharite clan, named after their ancestor Zohar. Shaulite clan, named after their ancestor Shaul. There were the clans of Simeon. Their registered troops numbered 22,200. These were the clans descended from the sons of Gad. The Zephonite clan, named after their ancestor Zephon. The Haggai clan, named after their ancestor Haggai. The Shunite clan, named after their ancestor Shuni. <laughs> the Oznite clan, named after their ancestor Ozni. The Erite clan, named after their ancestor Eri. The Arodite clan, named after their ancestor Arodi. The Arlite clan, named after their ancestor Arli. These were the clans of Gad, their registered troops numbered 40,500. Judah had two sons, Ur and Onan, who had died in the land of Canaan. These were the clans descended from Judah's surviving sons, the Shelonite clan named after their ancestor Shelah, the Perizzite clan named after their son Perez, the, Zahar the Zerahite clan named after their ancestor Zerah. These were the subclans descended from the Perizzites, the Hezronites, named after their ancestor Hezron, the Hamulites, named after their ancestor Hamul. These were the clans of Judah. Their registered troops numbered 76,500. These were the clans descended from the sons of Issachar, the Tolaite clan named after their ancestor Tola, the Puite clan named after their ancestor Pua, the Jashubite clan named after their ancestor Jashub, the Shimronite clan named after their ancestor Shimron. These were the clans of Issachar. Their registered troops numbered 64,300. These were the clans descended from the sons of Zebulon. Seradite clan named after Seradite clan named after their ancestor Sered. Elanite clan named after their ancestor Elon. J Jahilite clan named after their ancestor Jalil. These were the clans of Zebulon. Their, their registered troops numbered 60,500. Two clans were descended from Joseph through Manasseh and Ephraim. These were the clans descended from Manasseh. The Machirite clan named after the ancestor Machir. The Gileadite clan named after the ancestor Gilead, Machir's son. These were the subclans descended from the Gileadites. The Izzarites named after their ancestor Ezer, the Helekites named after their ancestor Helek, the Azraelites named after their ancestor Azrael, the Shechemites named after their ancestor Shechem, the Shemaidites named after their ancestor Shemida, the Hefer the Heferites named after their ancestor Hefer, 
one of the heifer's descendants, Zelophehad, had no sons, but his daughter's names were Mahla, Noah, Hagla, Milka, Tirzah. These were the clans of Manasseh. Their registered troops numbered 52,700. These were the clans descended from the sons of Ephraim, the Shuthalite clan, named after their ancestor Shithila, the Bekarite clan, named after their ancestor Bekur, the Tahanite clan, named after their ancestor Tahan. These were the sub clan descended from the Shithila Lahites, the Aaronites, named after their ancestor Aaron. These were the clans of Ephraim. Their registered troops numbered 32,500. These clans of Manasseh and Ephraim were all descendants of Joseph. These were the clans descended from the sons of Benjamin. The Belite clan named after their ancestor Bela. The Ashbelite clan named after their ancestor Ashbel. The Aharamite clan named after... Their ancestor Aharam, the Shephamite clan, named after their ancestor Shephem, the Hufanmite clan, named after their ancestor Hupham. These were the subclans descended from the Belaites, the Ardites, named after their ancestor Ard, the Namites, named after their ancestor Naaman. These were the clans of Benjamin. Their registered troops numbered 45,600. These were the clans descended from the sons of Dan, the Shuhamite clan named after the ancestor Shuham. These were the Shuhamite clans of Dan. Their registered troops numbered 64,400. These were the clans descended from the sons of Asher, Imnite clan named after their ancestor Imna. The Ishvite clan named after their ancestor Ishvi. The Barite clan named after their ancestor Bariah. These were the sub-clans descended from the Barites. The Heberites named after their ancestor Heber. The Malkelites named after their ancestor Malkiel. Asher also had a daughter named Sarah. These were the clans of Asher. Their registered troops numbered 53,400. These were the clans descended from the sons of Naphtali. Jazilite clan named after their ancestor Jazil. Gunite clan named after their ancestor Guni. Jezerite clan named after their ancestor Jazir. Shelemite clan named after their ancestor Shelem. These were the clans of Naphtali. Their registered troops numbered 45,400. In summary, the registered troops of all Israel numbered 601,730. Then the Lord said to Moses, Divide the land among the tribes and distribute the grants of land in proportion to the tribes' populations, as indicated by the numbers of names on the list. Give the larger tribes more land and the smaller tribes less land. Each group receiving a grant in proportion to the size of its population. But you must assign the land by lot and give land to each ancestral tribe according to the number of names on the list. Each grant of land must be assigned by lot among the larger and smaller tribal groups. This is the record of the Levites who were counted according to their clans, the Gershonite clan, named after their ancestor Gershon, the Kohathite clan, named after their ancestor Kohath, the Merarite clan, named after their ancestor Merari, the Libanites, the Libnites, the Hebronites, the Malites, the Mushites, and the Kor- Korathites were all subclans of the Levites. Now Kohath was the ancestor of Amron, and Amron's wife was named Jochebed. She also was a descendant of Levi, born among the Levites in the land of Egypt. Amron and Jochebed became the parents of Aaron, Moses, and their sister Miriam. To Aaron was were born Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, Ithamar, 
But Nadab and Abihu died when they burned before the Lord the wrong kind of fire, different from then, different than he had commanded. The men from the Levite clans who were one month older, oh sorry, who were one month old or older numbered twenty three thousand. But the Levites were not included in the registration of the rest of the people of Israel because they were not given an allotment of land when it was divided among the Israelites. So these are the results of the registration of the people of Israel as conducted by Moses and Eleazar, the priest on the plains of Moab, because beside the Jordan River across from Jericho. Not one person on this list had been among those listed in the previous registration taken by Moses and Aaron in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said to them, they will all die in the wilderness. Not one of them survived except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. Y'all, that was a lot. Please forgive my mispronunciations. <laughs> It's all good. I I believe Jesus still loves me and that my name is still written in his book by his grace in Jesus name. Anyway, (laughs) um, wow, this was so amazing. And I love the fact even where this requires some more digging, like where they would mention the women, you know, in that were part of these, uh, clans or these tribes and how, um, you know, like, Oh, such and such just had a daughter. You know, well, for instance, I love reading about, um, what's his name? Zelophehad. He had five daughters. And so that reminds me because my dad had five daughters. (laughs) And so, or has five daughters. And so it's just so amazing just to find connections and in this historical record and how these stories begin, their stories be continued to develop, right? And how God moves in and through all of them just to bring about his will, his promise, um, that his will is that none perish, but they all come to repentance, right? So what began in the beginning, right, with Adam and Eve, like he's restoring all of that. He's restoring us to him, so that we can have that perfect union with him. So everything that's happening in the middle here, all these pages, (laughs) is beautiful stuff. Well, thank you guys for grace. Yes, we were very late today. Um, But I pray that you still enjoyed this reading and that you will go back again and allow the Holy Spirit to just speak to your heart whatever he needs to say to you concerning your own family and the heritage of your family and how he wants to bless it how he wants to continue it and like how as a family unit you can fulfill the purpose of God all right be blessed this day every day shalom shalom God's perfect peace to your hearts your mind your soul don't forget to sign up for our 40 day adventure beginning next Wednesday February 21st all right the time will be announced if you sign up you'll receive the link to join me live as I read every day for 40 days it's a it's a strong commitment it ain't easy (laughs) but I believe that there is a blessing that God is faithful that as we draw near to him he will draw near to us and I don't know what he wants to do or what he's going to do or what he's going to say but hey I'm here for it will you be there I hope so thank you so much again have an amazing day we'll see you tomorrow all right God bless